Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com, and I got some new ink in the mail from India recently. This is the box of a new waterproof permanent ink from Suleika called Sampurna, which means something like complete or whole in Bengali and Hindi from Sanskrit. Several months ago, I had seen a post from Inked Happiness showing some preliminary tests of this new waterproof ink, and it appeared to be a beautiful, vibrant blue, so I was really happy when Chaum from Inked Happiness offered to send me a bottle to test out. The ink comes in a little 30 milliliter jar, which is very functional. You can see here that it says that it's a permanent blue ink. And you may notice that there's a strange green sheen in the glass. I don't know why it's not in the ink. This is, of course, the same type of jar that you might get a small portion of jam or chutney in. And I'd prefer the ink in their standard 60 milliliter bottles, but I'm actually taking this as a clue about the composition of the ink. You see, a bottle of this ink is 499 rupees, around 6 US dollars, which is a great price for any ink in the US, but it's as much as 10 times the price of Suleika's standard production inks that are sold in 60 milliliter bottles. This one is 200 rupees for 60 milliliters. So Sampurna must be an expensive ink to make. They've reduced the size of the bottle rather than try to charge a thousand rupees for a full size bottle. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you what this ink looks like. I'm going to swatch this ink on four papers. My color ring, Apica Premium CD paper, Aerofull, which is a little warmer, and Midori, which is ivory. And look at that vibrant blue. This isn't quite Bay State blue vibrant, but it's close. More importantly, while most permanent inks get dull as they dry, Sampurna stays nice and bright. Where the ink goes down heavy, it does take ages to dry. These swatches were drying for more than an hour, and you can see they're still wet. Dry times are a little slow, but much more normal when you're writing with the ink. The color, though, is a beautiful true blue, and it's very similar on all four papers. When you write with it, the flow is very reliable and about average, maybe a little bit on the dry side. This paper is Cosmoware Snow. Here's a quick writing sample on some Clairefontaine, and there are no feathering problems here. And this is some random cheap three ring binder paper, and it behaves pretty well too. Just a few pinpricks of bleed through on the opposite side. But notice that even on this absorbent paper, the ink is still not dry yet. For comparison, Here's Base State Blue on the same paper. Also a waterproof ink, which dries more quickly, but feathers and bleeds quite a bit more too. I already have a large collection of waterproof blue inks, so let me show you how the Suleika compares to some of my favorites. To start with, I love this ink. This is Koh -e Noor Document Ink, and even though it's named after an Indian diamond, it's made in the Czech Republic, and it costs only three or four dollars per bottle if you're in Europe, but you can't use it if you're a penguin. This is Noodler's Baltimore Canyon Blue, and this is probably the ink that I use the most in day-to-day -day writing. This is Pilot Suairo Blue, a pigment ink. And this is the old standard Pilot Namiki Blue, which doesn't claim to be waterproof, but it is to a large extent. So I will start with the Suleika. Then the Koinur. then the noodlers,
and the pilot Suairo. And finally, the Namiki. Already I can see that the middle three of these inks are developing some magenta sheen. And even the Namiki gets a little bit in the heavy areas. The Sampurna doesn't seem to have any this time. All of these inks are really nice vibrant colors, and there's some good variation in the hues here. Now here's a writing sample with each of them, and again, there's a good range of lighter and darker blues with some shading too. The Tsuairo was written with a dip pen, so it's unusually dark. The color is usually a lot more in line with the others. And now, the moment of truth. Let's see how these inks hold up to some water. First, let me say that this paper is Cosmo Air Snow, which is not very absorbent. So it's a worst case scenario for a waterproof ink that depends on a chemical reaction with paper fibers. So it's not surprising that the Namiki starts to run pretty quickly. In fact, all of the inks release just a little bit of surface color. They might not have been 100% dry. But if I switch this around a bit in the water and wash away the loose ink, they're all pretty good. All but the Sampurna and the Pilot have faded a little bit, but they're all certainly legible. Now let's take a look at a few more Indian inks. In addition to the Sampurna, I have one more Suleika ink that happens to be pretty waterproof. This is the Samarpan Ma ink. I believe that it is a gentle Iron Gall ink, like Platinum Blue Black or Pelican 4001 Blue Black. Then I have some Krishna inks. First is this Lyrebird, Waterproof Water Sapphire Blue. Then from the new Forever series is Blue Black. This one is also an Iron Gall ink. And then this one from the Monsoon series, Monsoon Sky, which only claims to be water resistant. And it's not an Iron Gall. Both of these come in the lovely new triangular bottles. I really like these. I also have these two inks in black from the Monsoon series and Forever series, but I haven't managed to try out either one yet, and since they're not blue, they'll have to wait for another video. All of the new Krishna inks are in 20 milliliter bottles, which makes them significantly more expensive than the Sampurna. Okay. This is Cosmo Air Snow Paper, and again, I'll start with the Sampurna. Then I'll go with the Water Sapphire. Then the Suleika Ma. Then the Monsoon Sky. And finally, the Forever Series Blue Black. And with these dry and labeled, it's time to introduce them to water. Right away, we can see that the monsoon sky starts to lose its blue. But the others are doing remarkably well. After spending some time in the water, the monsoon sky fades to a light purple, but the others are in pretty good shape. I've mentioned Iron Gall inks a few times here, and this is probably a good time to mention that there are basically two main categories of waterproof inks that are used in fountain pens. Those that are made with dyes, but that have a component that reacts with paper or the air, and they lose their water solubility after the chemical reaction. And then there's the other main category that doesn't use dyes. They use pigments instead that is, microscopic particles that are suspended in the ink rather than dissolved, and when the ink dries, the pigments stick where they are permanently. So the question is, which type of ink is this Suleika Sampurna? Suleika doesn't provide any clues on their website, so let's see if we can figure it out. First, let's take a look at what it might look like if we allow a standard dye ink and a pigment ink 
to dry on plastic and then we re-wet it. This dye ink is my Rainier Blue, and I'll put some in this plastic dish. And the pigment ink is Pilot Tsuwairo. Several hours later, the Rainier Blue had dried, but the pigment ink had not, and looked like it wasn't going to. So I put a fan on it for a couple more hours, and that didn't help. So I dabbed away the excess and gave it a bit more time, and it finally mostly dried. And when I put some water on these, the dye ink immediately dissolves again. But the pigment ink does not. And that's why you don't want your pigment ink to dry in your pen's feed. Now here's an iron gall ink. This is the Krishna Forever Blue Black, which as you saw was completely waterproof on paper. I'll make some little dots and thin stripes of it. Unlike the pigment ink, this one actually dries completely after just a few hours, so let's see what happens when I add water. Okay, most of this ink quickly re-dissolved, and if I slosh this water around a little bit, even more of it comes up. But there are some very fine lines along the edges, where the ink seems to be staying put. And finally, that brings us to the Suleika Sampurna. Again, I'm making small dabs of ink because I know that some types of ink take a long time to dry if they're not on paper. And sure enough, when I came back 24 hours later, most of this ink had still not dried. Only the smallest of drops around the edges had. So I dabbed away as much of the excess as I could, although I missed some, and I gave it a couple more hours to dry. But some of it is obviously still wet, so we'll have to focus on the parts that are dry, like the little droplets on the far bottom left. When I add water to these, nothing happens. They don't dissolve at all. But if I put some water on the areas that are still a little wet, they do diffuse back into the water. I'm going to empty out this water and add some more. Now it's a little easier to see the areas that were completely dry and the ink was left behind. So this is not a definitive result, but it looks to me as though Suleika Sampurna is a pigment ink rather than a dye ink for three reasons. First is the cost. It's more than twice as expensive as Suleika's most expensive dye inks including their other water-resistant inks, and pigments are much more expensive than dyes. Second, even most of the small drops of Samperna ink didn't dry on plastic even after a full day of exposure to the open air, which is common for pigment inks, but much more unusual for dye inks. And third, and most importantly, it doesn't dissolve in water when it finally does dry on plastic. So even if it's not a pigment ink, although I think it is, the fact that it won't re-dissolve means that it could potentially clog a feed and it should be treated with the same amount of care that you would use with a pigment ink. But don't get me wrong, you should not be afraid of this Semperna ink or pigment inks in general. Most pigment inks, as we've seen, will not dry on plastic even when exposed to the air for days, much less inside of a capped pen. And really, cleaning out or replacing a feed is a lot easier than you might think anyway. Not really a big deal for most pens. And for those of you who are in the USA and not afraid, I have one more unopened box of Samporna ink to give away. All you need to do is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below mentioning that you'd like to try it out, and I will draw one of your names when I get back from Japan next month. I also got some other stuff in my box from Suleika, including four more inks. This one is in the Samarpan line. It is Gamma Gem Blue. For those of you who aren't familiar with Gamma, it's an old school Indian pen company that mostly makes ebonite eyedropper fill pens like this one. You can see the name engraved in the side of the pen here and on the nib, which is excellent. I think I paid $8 for this pen. 
and you'll see the same stylized G on the ink box. The other three bottles of ink had some shipping issues, and the inks leaked and stained all of the boxes, so you'll have to use your imagination here a bit. Even though the Samporna jar isn't my favorite to look at, it definitely did not leak, and that's a big advantage. Anyway, this ink is from the Swaraj series, and it's called Dark Fantasy, which was an intriguing color name, so I decided to try it out. The bottle is the standard Seleka shape, and the label displays the broken chain, and the butterfly in the colors of the Indian flag, which is on all of the Swaraj inks. And again, you'll see them on the label of this ink. This one is called Sunkissed Saffron, also part of the Swaraj series. And finally, we have a Samarpan series ink that is dedicated to the poet Sukhanta Bhattacharya, who wrote poetry in rebellion against British rule back in 1930s India, but he died at only 20 years old before India gained independence. The color is called Bread Brown. Let me just give you a quick indication of what these colors look like. This is some heavy Canson Bristol pen and ink paper, and I'll start with the gem blue. This looks like a good solid royal blue, leaning a bit towards purple. Then the bread brown, this looks like a light orangey brown, I like it. Now, dark fantasy. Hmm. This just looks like a medium brown. I think I was expecting something darker and maybe more maroon, but it's still a good medium brown. And finally, this is Sunkissed Saffron. I'm not sure it's coming across here, but this is a beautiful, vibrant orange. I'm gonna have to spend a couple more minutes with this one. I'm gonna swatch this ink on four papers. Again, the Apica Premium CD paper, Rhodia, Aerofull, and Midori. Yes, that is a beautiful orange, with modest variation across the papers. It's a little lighter on the first swatch, and there's a little bit of feathering there too, but none on the Rhodia. And it's more pale and dusty on the Aerofull, and a bit darker on the Midori. I also got this beautiful handmade pen sleeve. I love the red and orange of this cloth, and the little wooden bead on the closure and it only costs about $5. And then I got a pair of these, because one will be given away with the Sempurna ink bottle. This pen sleeve is made out of jute, and also leather, and I think that this pattern is absolutely gorgeous. And these cost less than $4 from Suleika. And that's it! Again, if you'd like to enter to win a bottle of Semprana ink and a jute pen sleeve, just make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and leave a comment below mentioning that you'd like to try the ink. And I'll choose a name from the list when I get back from Japan next month. I don't know whether you'll hear from me here on YouTube until I get back, but it's possible that I'll post on Instagram from Japan. So if you don't follow me there, you can consider it. On Instagram, I'm Matthew underscore the wet pen. Thanks again for all of your support and for following my channel. Stay safe out there, everyone, and enjoy your pens and inks. I'll see you soon.